Completing squares, leading coefficient is 1 in the given example. Find the vertex of the parabola from the given quadratic function. Well, this is the very first one in the list of four in which we are trying to describe the process of completing squares by which we can convert quadratic function from standard form to vertex form. So here we have two questions. I'll do one of them for you. The other one is the practice problem. Both are very similar and you have to adopt exactly same steps. Now as you note, in this particular equation, y equals to x squared minus 4x minus 5, the leading coefficient is 1, the coefficient of x squared. So in this case, the process is slightly simpler, one step lesser than the normal process, where the leading coefficient is not 1. Now what we really do is we consider the first two terms and keep the third one aside. Remember that part first. So let me write these first two terms in kind of a square bracket to show you that we are actually dealing with these two terms, x squared minus 4x, and we'll keep the third term kind of aside, right? Now, that is the first part. Second part is, do half of 4. What is half of 4? 2. We add and subtract square of that number. So that is what we do inside this bracket. So we have x squared minus 4x, just copy it as such, half of 4 is 2, so we'll add and subtract 2 square to this term. And what we get is a step closer to completing the squares. Now you can see that the first three terms form a perfect square, and they can be written as x minus sign comes from there and 2 from here, x minus 2 whole square. So first three terms become a perfect square. Fourth term, you write as such, minus 2 square will give us minus 4. 2 squared is 4, minus 5. And then we can open these brackets. When you open the brackets, it is x minus 2 whole square, minus 5, minus, minus 4, minus 5 can be combined now, right? Minus 4 and minus 5, giving us the result, which is x minus 2 whole square, minus 9, right? So that is the equation of a parabola in vertex form. So from here you can directly read the vertex. So what is the vertex? Basically you can see since this is positive our parabola is going up, right? So we can kind of sketch the parabola now. It is kind of like this function where that point, which is the vertex, is at 2 minus 9, right? So it has a minimum at 2 since it opens upwards, right? So we see the vertex of the parabola is 2 minus 9, and that vertex represents a minimum in this particular case, right? So we have minimum at x equals to 2, and the value is, and minimum value, minimum, and minimum value is the y value, which is y equals to minus 9. So that is what we get from the vertex form. You can also describe transformation from here as compared to x squared. If you describe transformation, it will be 2 units moving right, 9 units down, right, for this particular case. Now I'll appreciate if you follow the same steps and get the other equation in the vertex form. Now let me explain you this step once again. If you remember, what is a minus b whole square equals to? Let me write down here a minus b whole square is equal to what? a minus b whole square is a square minus 2ab plus b square, right? So you can see here, the idea of making it half is to get the center term as twice ab. Do you see that? That is why we made it half and we squared that number to get b square. We already had a square in terms of x square. And then we kind of wrote these three terms as a perfect square a minus b, right? In case this was plus, only difference will be here you will have a plus sign, correct? In this case, since it was minus, we got minus. I hope that makes the things absolutely clear. Now, the next example we'll take with leading coefficient not equal to 1, right? And there you will feel the need for the square brackets, which is kind of redundant in this particular case. 
I hope you understand the process and by the end of four examples it will be absolutely clear. Thank you and all the best.